Do you avoid things to reduce your anxiety? Does your anxiety say, just don't do it and you'll feel fine? We're gonna talk about that avoidance. Stay tuned, that's what's up next. Hi, my name is Natasha Daniels. I'm a therapist and I make videos for people with anxiety or OCD. And today we're gonna to talk to you about what anxiety loves the most, the fuel line to the fire of anxiety. And that is avoidance. Avoidance is anxiety's food. The more you feed it, the bigger anxiety grows. So let's talk about what this looks like. When you are anxious, the thing that anxiety often makes us wanna do is avoid. And in that moment, it is complete relief. And I get this because I have an anxiety disorder myself and I'm raising three kids with anxiety issues. And we all feel better when we can just say, you know what, we're not gonna do it. Don't worry about it, let's not do it. Or I'll do it later, or I'll postpone it, or I'll do it next month, right? Do you feel that? That relief, that instant relief when you're like, I'm not gonna do it. That's, that's the end of that. Sometimes it's a panicky thing, like I can't do it. I can't breathe, I'm overwhelmed. But at the end of the day, when we avoid and we don't do the thing that we need or want to do because of anxiety, long term, right? In the short little moment, it feels good. But in the long term, it feels worse. And why does it feel worse? Because the next time we try to do it, our anxiety will double down and be like, you couldn't do it last time. And last time was a nightmare. So you can't do it this time. It actually gives anxiety power. It gives anxiety proof that you couldn't do it, that you're not capable of doing it. And so your anxiety goes up. And this can look different for each one of you, but let's talk about some examples. Um, I stopped driving a lot when I met my husband 12 years ago because he drove all the time. I didn't have anxiety really about driving, but I didn't drive a lot. And then when he passed away, Driving was so anxiety producing for me because I had not done it in so long. And I guess that crowds and congestion made me anxious. My daughter, who's in her 20s, has anxiety around driving and she hit a bush. <laughs> you know, everyone, everyone was fine, but then she stopped driving. She avoided because that idea of getting behind the wheel was too overwhelming for her. Well, recently she had to drive again and her anxiety was 10 times higher. Right? Do you ever have an assignment at work or at school and it makes you anxious, you're not sure you could do it, you're not sure you'll do, be, be able to do it well, and so you postpone it, you wait, you wait so long that all of a sudden you have to cram it in and now your anxiety is 10 times higher. Or maybe you're anxious about um, sleeping alone or you're anxious about being out in the woods or you're anxious about eating different foods or you're anxious about um, doing things that Make your anxiety really anxious for me it's public speaking like standing in front of an audience which most people feel anxious about but for me it's on another level so the more we avoid doing things that we need or want to do the bigger the anxiety and it's an anxiety avoidance loop it just goes around and around you feel anxious you avoid your anxiety goes higher the next time you're in a situation where you have to confront that same thing you avoid more Anxiety grows bigger and you're like in this huge loop that grows bigger. Part of that is because you are also telling your brain that it is a dire situation and that you cannot do it. And so your brain is like, got it, we can't do that. That's too hard. So the next time you're presented with it, even higher, higher and harder. So what do you do with this? Well, it is hard to do things that are really scary for you. And my suggestion is don't fully avoid it. Can you go towards it just a bit, right? It doesn't have to be an all or nothing belief. It doesn't mean you do it or you don't do it. Let's say you're anxious to go to school um, and maybe you haven't been in school for a really long time, which makes it even worse because now you're like, I'm so anxious to go to school. What am I gonna say to people? I haven't been around in a while. Right, you see how that avoidance grows the problem? Maybe you drive to the parking lot and you sit in the parking lot for a little while and then you go home. That's not full avoidance. You move towards where you needed to be and you sat in that discomfort. Or if you are anxious to sleep over at someone's house, maybe you sleep over um, until like midnight and then your parent picks you up and you sat with that discomfort of being there. For me with public speaking, maybe it starts off doing this and then I had a podcast and then um, 
I was able to do it on Zoom. When I first did a Zoom call, I wasn't even a speaker. I mean, I remember feeling really shaky and I was like, can people see me? <laughs> it was just so overwhelming. It was when Zoom first came out and um, I wasn't even saying anything. I was just on camera participating. Then I moved up to being able to teach on Zoom. Then I could, I presented to like, you know, thousands of people on Zoom. That wasn't too overwhelming for me. I built it up over time, not avoiding it. Um, and this past year, well, the last couple of months, I actually went on stage and I talked in front of about 50 people. That was beyond nerve wracking. But then I did it again last month and it wasn't anxiety producing for me at all. Why? Because I got off the avoidance loop and I faced my fears one small step at a time, right? I couldn't have just got on stage. I had to build up. I had to do the Zoom and I had to do like different things where I felt exposed and then I was able to do it. So what things is your anxiety having you avoid? And what actions can you take to slowly move towards that? There are some things that we have to do in life or that we want to do in life that anxiety is making us avoid. And there are things that we never want to do, we don't want to do, we don't even care if our you know, avoidance is going to grow it. And so that's not important to you. So pick something that's important to you. It might be something that you need in order to be successful in life. People need to get into a car, ideally. It makes life more convenient. People need to go to school. They need to go to work. We need to eat food, right? We need to have a good solid sleep. We might want to connect with people. We might have to talk in front of people, right? We might have to do a lot of assignments or work assignments. And so where is your anxiety holding you back? And what small steps can you do to get off that wheel, that avoidance wheel, and get into your power? Well, I hope that you find the sparkle in everything you do. And I'll talk to you again next Thursday. Take care.